A consumer product that causes this much harm to the public would normally be subject to a recall. But federal law prohibits the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the agency responsible for protecting the public from dangerous products from regulating guns. This is absurd. After one child died using a Peloton treadmill last year, the Consumer Product Safety Commission intervened and recalled the product. But when hundreds of children die using guns, there is no federal response. There is no federal safety standard for guns. Even though 40,000 Americans hurt or kill themselves or other people in hundreds of accidents every year. Instead of regulating guns like any other consumer product, federal law protects gun manufacturers. A teenager can watch a video online and learn how to modify a rifle to make it more deadly. And the gun industry avoids any liability if that teenager uses that modified rifle to fire repeatedly and rapidly at innocent people, even though their products could be designed to prevent unsafe modifications. I want to give an example. In 2001, a 13-year-old boy named Billy accidentally shot his father's handgun and killed his friend Josh. Billy mistakenly thought the gun was unloaded because he had removed the gun's magazine. Josh's family sued the gun manufacturer for failing to warn Billy and other consumers that their product could be fired without a magazine. It's a simple case. It should have been decided by a jury, as is provided under the Constitution. Instead, because of the gun industry's immunity, the gun manufacturer was able to dismiss the case without a trial. If a pharmaceutical company failed to warn customers about the known risks of one of their drugs, they could face thousands of lawsuits. But we allow the gun industry to sell weapons without taking any precautions to protect children and families from fatal accidents. Mr. Suplina, do you think the gun industry would do more to protect children if Congress ended their immunity? Absolutely. Would ending the gun industry's immunity put gun manufacturers out of business? No, it would not. When there's an E. coli outbreak in lettuce, it's removed from the shelves in grocery stores seemingly overnight, and that outbreak is stopped in its tracks. When there's a faulty baby stroller, it's recalled immediately so that more babies can't wiggle out of it. When a car is recalled, you get calls and letters relentlessly so that you immediately aren't put in danger of malfunctioning brakes. These protections are put in place, and rightfully so, because we as a society understand and want to make sure that steps are taken immediately and proactively to keep us safe. And manufacturers and suppliers, knowing that they could face legal liability, have a vested interest in keeping their products safe so that they don't get sued. That is a good system. It's a system that rewards safety, protects lives, and punishes recklessness. I don't think you could find a single reasonable person who wants to let E. coli spread uninhibited. And yet, at the same time, Time, we've decided that guns and gun manufacturers shouldn't be subjected to the same rules as lettuce. And I know that the answer might change depending on whether you're asking a Republican congressman or not, but no, lettuce is not as dangerous as a firearm. And yet, let's just be honest here, this is the system working exactly as it's built to work. There is a reason that gun lobbyists pour so much money into politics. It's so that they can write themselves loopholes exactly like this. In this cycle alone, gun groups have already given nearly a million dollars to over 200 Republicans. And in return, this is what they get. They get qualified immunity for gun manufacturers. They get a party that opposes, in lockstep, new legislation that would permit universal background checks and red flag laws and raising the age to 21 to buy an AR-15 and closing the Charleston loophole. The gun lobby has purchased the Republican Party, and as a result, they want you to know that these mass shootings will continue unabated because the campaign donations are more important than saving Americans. And to give you an idea of the effectiveness of consumer protections, if Congress was beholden to Americans over gun manufacturers, just look at big tobacco. In the 90s, using consumer protection laws, 46 state attorneys general sued the four largest tobacco companies and reached a settlement that prevented tobacco companies from certain advertising practices, particularly ads marketing toward kids, forced them to pay a minimum of $206 billion billion dollars over 25 years to pay for healthcare costs related to smoking and created the National Public Education Foundation dedicated to reducing smoking. Why? Because they sold dangerous products and kept the risks concealed. And because Big Tobacco didn't own politicians then in the same way that the gun lobby owns them today, Americans were able to get some protection thanks to our elected officials. And what was the result from all of this danger? Smoking rates have plummeted since that time in the 90s, when a third of all young people and a quarter of all adults in the US smoked. 
Now, less than 10% of young people and only 13% of adults smoke. That means less cancer, less heart disease, less lung disease, fewer strokes, diabetes, COPD, tuberculosis, rheumatoid arthritis. It means fewer needless deaths, which is a good thing, and it's what we should always strive for. It's what our elected officials did strive for before those companies that those officials were supposed to be regulating decided to purchase those people. What we saw with Big Tobacco was a government that worked for constituents against a dangerous industry. What we're seeing today with the gun lobby is a government that works for a dangerous industry against their own constituents. But let's remember one more thing. It doesn't have to be this way. We are in control of our own destiny. We have agency and we can vote majorities into office who will change the laws to protect Americans and not the companies that prey on them. We have a midterm fast approaching. So remember this feeling that you have now because in a few months, you can take power away from the very people who've taken power away from you. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on the screen. And to support my work beyond that, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I cover the week's most important stories and interview the biggest players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, and so many more. The link is also right here on the screen. And finally, to take action yourself and sign petitions on the most important issues, go to briantylercohen.com petition.